Look to the mountains, look to the hills. Love comes to us with joy. The world is filled with beauty. Flowers appear on the earth. Bird song brightens the day. Crops yield their produce in abundance. The air is filled with sweetness. The summer of God's love is with us. Let the oil of gladness anoint your souls. Arise and sing for joy. Hear now the words of the Gospel of Mark. And Jesus said, For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world, Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The final piece of wisdom literature, Solomon's Song of Songs, considered to be a love poem. Hear now the words that Solomon penned. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither floods can drown it. If one offered for love, all the wealth of one's house, you would be utterly scorned. Amen. Oh, how you doing this morning? Um, yeah, it really wasn't a story that Solomon was sharing with us. It's something called a poem. And it's about love. Who loves you in this in life? Well, probably your moms and dads? Grandmom and granddad? Oh yeah. And you got friends that love you too? But Solomon also wanted us to know that God loves you. And we're loved by God. And not only that, but it was so much love, like waters that flooded and there was too much, and it spilled out all over the place. Because God's love fills our hearts with so much love, there's enough for other people. Oh, we should have some other people, right? See how good I am at this. Huh? Oh dear. Yeah, but you know what? Their hearts aren't filled with love. But Solomon tells us that God's love fills us up enough that we can share. One, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more than you've ever been loved before. And see, God's love filling our hearts and it's beginning to spread out and start to fill other people's hearts with God's love. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Dear God, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you send people into our lives who love us. Help our hearts be filled with your love 
that we can share that love with others. Amen. Bye. Song of Songs, or Song of Solomon, as it's often called, since it was authored by King Solomon, the wise king of Israel. It's an interesting book of the Bible because for a long time it was not considered a part of the Bible. It really wasn't until the first century that the rabbis in the Hebrew community said it should be there. They saw it far too much as a a worldly, secular love poem. You know, the guy in love writes to the girl he's in love with. But as they took a look at it and looked at it in faith, they began to realize Solomon's writing this to us from God. That this is the God of love telling us that we are loved that we are beloved by God. We are God's children, and God loves us. With a love that is overflowing like a flood. A love that is stronger than death. A love that is as beautiful as all of the, the creation that he describes in this poem. It is really a love poem about being loved by God. The play, A Raisin in the Sun, later made into a movie, originally starring Sidney Poitier on stage and reprising his role in the film adaptation, tells the story of the younger family. It's the 1950s, south side of Chicago, the tenements, ghetto. Black family living in poverty. Walter's father dies, but he has life insurance policy. $10,000. Not much today, but a fortune. Life-changing money for a poor black family in the tenements in the 1950s. And thus begins the family's struggle with what to do with this fortune. Walter's sister, Benetha, wants to go to nursing school. And a portion of that would pay for it. Mama wants to use the money to buy a bungalow, a home, a place that would be theirs. Now, Walter, Walter has a friend who's got an investment, surefire, can't miss, the thing. And Walter wins out and gets the money. And loses all of it. Benetha is furious, angry, her heart's torn. I could have gone to nursing school. We could have had a good down payment on home. You lost it all. And she's angry, bitter, and full of fury and hatred. And Mama speaks. Me and your daddy. But I thought I taught you something else too. I thought I taught you to love him. Love him? There's nothing left to love. There's always something left to love. Have you cried for that boy today? Now, I don't mean for yourself and for the family because we lost the money. I mean for him and what he's gone through. And God help him. God help him what it's done to him. Child, when do you think is the time to love somebody the most? When he's done good and made things easy for everybody. <laughs> no, no. No, that ain't the time.
time at all. It's when he's at his lowest and he can't believe in himself because the world's done whipped him so. When you start measuring somebody, measure them right, child. Measure them right. You make sure that you done taken into account the hills and the valleys he's come through to get to wherever he is. You see, Mama understands. We don't just love people when they're doing right, doing good things for us and nice things for us. We need to love them when they're broken and when they're down when they're the least lovable because they truly need love then. That's the kind of love that God has for us. God loves you not when you're just because you're good or not just when you're doing the right things, but God loves you always and especially sends his love when you're the most lost, the most hurt, most hurtful, because God wants to fill your heart with love. So much so that it's waters that are overflowing like a flood. Stronger than death in the grave. God's love fills our hearts and overfills them when we need it the most. God has always done that. Adam and Eve disobeyed. Adam and Eve turned against God's will. And still God loved them. Cain kills his brother. And God still loved him. Time and time again, the Bible reminds us that we fall short. We are sinful. And yet God's love is still there. Filling our hearts overflow, flooding out, so that love we can share with others. Solomon's poem is a love poem, a poem about how God loves you, a poem about God's love that fills and overfills, that we can share that love. Amen, beloved children. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all in need. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain, especially those we hold most near and dear to us in our hearts. Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, 
or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in certain times, to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. In Jesus' love incarnate, you provide us all we need for each day. His words comfort the weary. His actions challenge the contented. His touch heals the sick. His presence feeds the deepest hunger in our souls. In Jesus and in his feast, you provide for us the sustenance we need to re respond to the cries of creation. The bread of life nourishes our run-down bodies. The cup of blessing revives our thirsty souls. For centuries, Christians of different customs have gathered to commune with you and each other for the sharing of this feast. In the partaking, you have been with them, just as you are with us now. And so you join with our brothers and sisters around the world to, by remembering that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God, we remember and give thanks for your Son, and we ask that you bless and pour your Spirit upon these simple things, bread and fruit of the vine. With these elements, nourish and sustain us, our way, our truth, our life, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. Praise be to you, now, tomorrow, forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. and the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ sustain you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
and receive now the blessing that Aaron spoke to the children of God. Yevreka ka Adonai, Vishmeracha, Yaer Adonai, Panev Elecha, Vichunaka, Yisa Adonai, Panev Elecha, Visim, Lecha Shalom. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.